Hey, this is part two of my video on building a high-end machine. So, uh, in this part, I'm just going to show the machine that I built. And uh, this, I got off a guy maybe about two years ago off Craigslist. And originally, this came with the AMD 5X86 at 133 megahertz. But uh, if you watched the last video, you'll know this one, I replaced that with a Cyrix uh, 5x86 120 megahertz, which is a pretty uncommon, if not rare, CPU. So I'm just going to show you this machine set up, uh, maybe some videos of it playing a game. I don't know. Depends on how lazy I'm feeling. Um, so yeah, the, the case is interesting. It has, well, it has the, uh, the display here, the LED display for the speed, and it has this thing that comes up, I guess, to protect it, but it doesn't, well, it, a minute ago it wasn't working, but it works now. It, it was doing that. It was just like sliding up, but I guess it's just finicky. So that's kind of an interesting thing, but um, yeah, I didn't really deck this thing out too much. Just, you know, uh, standard floppy drives. I got the 1.2 megabyte and of course the CD-ROM drive. Power reset and there's a turbo button. And for how this set PC is set up, uh, the turbo button is actually pretty crucial. Um, when I got this PC and I opened up, what it had inside was the infamous PC Chips M919 motherboard. Uh, and I'm gonna, let me just show you inside. Okay. So you probably can't see that real well, but I'll be sure to I'll get a close up eventually. Um, but let me just talk about the PC Chips M9. 19 motherboard. Now it is a uh, late era uh, 486 socket 3 board and it does have PCI slots. Um, what made this board so infamous is some of the business practices uh, that have to do with it. Uh, L2 cache on the motherboard, it was on the motherboard at the time and it was actually quite expensive. Um, so what PC chips did with this motherboard, the M919, is they actually put fake L2 cache chips on the board. Uh, so you'd get the board and you'd see the chips on there, and if you knew anything about computers, you know, like, oh, that's, it's got L2 cache, and the guy selling it, if he's probably crooked or maybe he didn't know, is like, yeah, there it is. Um, but they're fake. They're completely fake. Um, this was really legally, legally questionable. I, I, I don't even know if this was legal at the time. It was kind of misleading to consumers. It was pretty much flat out lying. Um, if you look at the traces on the little chips, which I'll show you in a, in a minute if I can get the camera in there, um, they don't go anywhere. Um, it's even more insidious when you, when you boot up the machine and it posts, it, it says L2 cache. It said something like L2 cache activated or available or something. So even in the post, it, it seems like there's L2 cache, but if you run a program like cache check, there is no L2 cache. It's completely fake. Um, the one plus side of this board though, there is a slot that you can, there's a proprietary module for L2 cache, which I do happen to have in this machine. They're not common at all. Sometimes they go for outrageous prices on eBay. Um, you have to be really careful because there are Pentium, they're called Coast Modules, uh, cache on a stick. The ones for, in the Pentium era and I think some of the 90s Macintoshes, they're very common. They are completely incompatible with this board. Uh, inserting one of those modules can destroy the module, the board, or both possibly. Um, so you need to be very careful. Most of the official proprietary uh, cache modules for this particular board will say on the back, for 46 M919 use only, although I have seen a few online that do not have that. So either you have to make sure before inserting that cache uh, chip uh, that it is for the M919. Either it say, it'll say it on the back or it's from a tr source you really trust. Um, it only comes in 256 kilobytes from what I understand. I actually found mine on the vintage computer forums. There's a guy selling a couple of these boards and one of them had the coast module and I asked him, I was like, you know, I have the board, can you separate it for me? And I bought it for $40, which is, I think is reasonable considering and I, I really wanted it. Um, this board is a little buggy. It, it, it gets a lot of flack for being a really bad motherboard. 
Um, really, I mean, it has its quirks, but once you figure it out, it's actually a pretty decent, fast board. So, you know, I mean, it does weird things like when I did have the Coast module, it would tell me it post. It will say 256K uh, L2 cache. Again, cache check didn't uh, see it. It wasn't working, even though it was being detected. And it took me a while to figure it out. I, I had to take out the EDO RAM and replace it with FPM RAM, and then it worked. It miraculously worked. So the board has a lot of little quirks. Um, so let's take a closer look at this thing. All right, so here's the motherboard itself. It has uh, one, two, four 16-bit ISA and three PCI slots. Um, this revision uses 72-pin RAM. I'll use a flashlight here. It's back there. I'm just lazy. I don't feel like pulling all this stuff out uh, to get a good view. If you go to the blog, there's a better view of this motherboard. Uh, so if you look down there, those, let me see if I can get a close up. Those are the fake L2 cache chips. Um, they say right on them, right back. Uh, and then there's, you know, like numbers, like they're real uh, cache chips. They are a fake, uh, as the Romulan Bastard guy from that Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine episode would say it's a fake. Those are completely and utterly fake chips. Um, I've seen revisions of this motherboard that lack those. They're not on there. I guess that's the more, <laughs> you know, that was the more, uh, you know, not illegally, you know, kind of sleazy being sold version. But this one has completely fake L2 cache chips. Um, there is the Coast module. It's brown. It almost looks like a VLP slot at first, but it's not. That is the uh, that is the L2 cache Coast slot, and it, it actually works. If you find the correct module, uh, it will work. And this board is actually pretty speedy with um, the 256 KB. I'm trying to get a back shot of the back, but that's not working out. Um, there's some interesting things on this. You can't, that is my Cyrix 120 megahertz chip. I, uh, you know, obviously have a fan and a heat sink on it. Uh, the one thing that may seem weird is, you look here, that jumper, those are the jumpers for setting the front side bus. And there is another quirk on this motherboard, which is, uh, when you have a, well, let me see, uh, 40 megahertz uh, front side bus, it there's a little quirk where it cuts your PCI speed, um, so the speed that your PCI card's running at, from 33 megahertz to 27 megahertz. So even though you might have a chip, you know, running on a 40 megahertz front side bus, um, some benchmarks and games might actually be slower because the speed of your video card and anything on your PCI bus is getting cut. Um, there's a by a divider, an automatic divider. Now there's a way around this, which is, I mean, depending on your card, it might not work, but it's it's pretty safe. I've never had any issues doing this. And that is to take your turbo button and connect it to the 40, I believe it's the 40 megahertz, uh, 40 megahertz front side bus jumper. And I had to elongate mine in this strange uh, fashion. <laughs> uh, but what you do is you, you boot up and you let it post in uh, 33 megahertz, I believe it is, or maybe it's 20. Uh, anyways, when you post it at 33, yeah, it is 33 megahertz, because it posts, it will post at 100 megahertz. So it's times, yes, it's going at 33 megahertz front and side bus, so the chip is times three multiplier, so you're getting 100 uh, megahertz. And it keeps the uh, PCI speed regular at 33 megahertz. So you're kind of tricking it. Now once it's done posting, you hit the turbo button and that uh, sends a jumper to the 40 megahertz uh, jumper, it kicks the machine into 40 megahertz and all of a sudden your CPU is running at its, you know, if you're using the CPU, it will, then it will run at 120 and your PCI slot is running at the correct speed or maybe it gets overclocked. I, actually, I think your PCI um, slot then gets overclocked to 40 megahertz, which Depending on the card you're running, uh, it, it could or could not work. Mine works. I'm using an Arc Logic card. I'll show you that. Hold on. Okay, so this is the video card I'm using. Um, 
It is an ARC 2000 MT PCI card. Uh, this is a very surprising card. Um, the ARC chip is very surprising. When I, 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 This was in the machine when I first got it, and I thought uh, it's just some generic uh, throwaway card. And I pretty much just set it aside. And then I was on Fogans, and I was reading through posts, and someone was benchmarking marking this card, and they are talking about how it's really fast, and it does really well. And it actually is right up there competing, you know, with the uh, well-known ET4000 chip from Sun Labs. And so I put this back in, and I did benchmarks, and yeah, this is a really good uh, video card for DOS. It's very fast, perhaps one of the fastest, and uh, compatibility is still really good. And uh, I think this makes a really good choice for DOS. It's not a very well-known uh, card, but yeah, it works great for DOS. It's really fast and compatible. Um, and it works with this board. It works overclocked at 40 megahertz. So uh, that's what I'm using for video sound. Uh, this really long card. This is. It looks like an uh, A32, an AWE32 from uh, Creative Labs. It kind of is, but it's the cheaper Sound Blaster 32 version. Um, it uses a Vibra chip, a Vibra 16 chip. Uh, if you can see that down there. So yeah, it's an okay, you know, card. Uh, it's a step up from the Sound Blaster 16. So, but that's about it for this board. Um, it has some, you know, it has built-in IDE and floppy. Um, still uses an AT power connector. Uh, let me show you the BIOS really quick. All right, so here it's booting up. Uh, I'm not sure how well. The screen can be seen with this camera set up here. But yeah, it is a Cyrix. It says 256 L2 cache, 120 megahertz uh, CPU clock. Um, I didn't do the trick here, so it is running with the cut uh, PCI bus. So let me just, let me uh, restart it here and show you the BIOS. Because there's some interesting things. That art card's two megabytes. Okay, so here is the uh, BIOS from 94. It's an uh, American Mega Trends. I've seen this on a couple other motherboards. It's kind of a nice BIOS because it's, it's a GUI. It's a graphical user interface with mouse support. Um, so you've got a lot of things. Now here's the cool thing about the M919 is it's the only board, known board, that in the chipset options, there are options for enabling um, features of the Cyrix uh, chip that were disabled. Uh, Cyrix LSSER bit, and there's an option to enable or disable it. Um, I think there's one more somewhere. Yeah, here, a linear burst for Cyrix uh, 5x86, and I have both of those enabled. Um, but this is the only board, known board with options in the BIOS to do that. Um, here's my memory timings. I have mine set to zero wait states, and uh, I have it set to write back cache for L1 and L2. And yeah, uh, DRAM uh, read wait state, DRAM write wait state at zero, and I have my cache speed options at 212. Um, that's the best available. So this is this board flies uh, with the Cyrix 120 megahertz and with the, the PCI bus overclocked, uh, doing that trick. Uh, this thing is fast. Uh, you know, there's a lot of flack about this motherboard. It's kind of infamous, um, but it, it, it's really when you can get it running stable and you get used to its quirks, it's a fast board. Um, you know, PCI 46 socket three motherboards don't grow on trees, so. Uh, any any PCI 46 board, you know, is kind of worth having, uh, despite some of the bugs. Um, the, the yeah, I mean, I, I've heard boards that handle the EDO better. Some don't support it at all for whatever reason. Earlier revisions, I think, um, mine supports EDO, but as I said, on my board, uh, there's a weird quirk that if I have EDO RAM of any size, the L2 cache is disabled. Um, 
and it ends up being that the board actually runs faster with L2 cache and FPM RAM than with no L2 cache and EDO RAM. So I go with FPM RAM. Um, there's probably some board revisions out there that can handle the EDO and the L2 cache. Maybe it's just a flaw with my board, in my, my individual board. I don't know. Um, but it's one of the little quirks of it. So, if I'm not feeling too lazy in a minute, uh, you'll be seeing some game footage, and this will be at the machine running at the full, me using the little trick, uh, you know, uh, setting when it posts, it's going to be running at 33 megahertz, and then I hit the turbo button after post, and then we get the Cyrix running at 120 with the overclock PCI bus, and we'll see a little bit of game footage. So, uh, I'll just say in advance, thank you for watching this video.